Let's take a second view. Mr. Sheyi Showemimo's view is also very popular among many senior lawyers and even many non-lawyers. The perception that that judgment is likely to create is that we have double standards. One for the ordinary man and one for judicial uh, officers. Um, I don't think there is any need for, to make an exception of judges in relation to prosecution for crimes. The, I, I think the consideration of most people is that the, there's need to protect judicial independence and therefore uh, guard against the executive interference. But the other side of the coin is that people will now have the view that maybe the, some of the proceedings of the NGC may then be an attempt to cover up the misconduct of judges. What I, I really do not see the rationale for having this sort of difference in, produ in procedure for the prosecution of crimes. If it is a misconduct that, not, that does not amount to a crime, then I think the NJC should deal with it. But where it is misconduct that amounts to a crime, then in that situation, I believe the judge, like every other Nigerian, should be taken to court. The NJC is really not a regular court of law. It is not established to try criminal offenses. So when you now have charges against judges, you then begin to wonder why they should be taken to the NJC and not the regular courts. I can appreciate, as I said before, the concerns that people feel that um, taking judges to court will undermine the rule of law, will uh, might seem to be an that it could be used as an uh, intimidation. intimidation for uh, judges, but and that it has even cowed some of the judges and, uh, and they operate under the fear of who will be next. Yes, that that is a legitimate consideration, but I would prefer that they go through the court process and maybe in the course of the trial, the presiding judge or whoever is trying to, will be able to deal with that sort of fear. If you charge someone unfairly to court without evidence, uh, then you can be sure that the judges are there to be able to ensure that um, uh, justice is done that is not unfairly convicted. Uh, the same fears that you have are the same fears that the ordinary citizen also would have. So I don't believe that we need, because of that consideration, that we need to create an exception for judges. But your view, does it not erode the constitutional provision that allows the NJC exercise its disciplinary role? Well, there is that power that they can look into cases of misconduct. But what I'm saying is that where those cases of misconduct are capable of amounting to crimes, then we should be wary of creating what I would call double standards. Usually the principle of law that we all adhere to is that the law is no respecter of persons. So we should not have a situation in which we have sort of different standards for prosecuting people for crimes. They should all be the same thing. Um, if, for instance, a doctor in the discharge of his duties were to 
uh, commit a crime, would we wait for the uh, medical, medical council to first deal with it before the police can do their work? I believe that the fears which we all possibly can entertain that it could be used as a vehicle for intimidation can be taken care of by the courts themselves. These, the people who are going to try the, these judges are them, themselves going to be judges. In the course of the trial, they will be able to discover whether this is just a trumped up charge or it is genuinely being prosecuted. So clearly you'd be disappointed if the Supreme Court upholds the uh, judgment of the Court of Appeal. Well, I would always accept whatever judicial uh, decision the Supreme Court churns out and uh, believe that they are acting in accordance with their understanding of the law. Whatever decision they come out with, if it is one which upholds the decision of a court of appeal, then there has to be enough support for that decision in the body of the judgment to engender confidence in people that this fear of double standard uh, would not arise.